Hello, my name is Trevor Pike. I'm the Technical Product Specialist for Defender. In this video, we're going to perform an installation of Defender 5.9.1. This video provides a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the Defender installation wizard, as well as how to configure the Defender security server. All features will be installed as part of the walkthrough, Active Directory Preparation, Defender Security Server, and the Defender Administration Console, as well as optional features, Defender Management Portal, and Defender Management Shell. Once all features have been installed, we'll configure the Defender Security Server. Please ensure you know the domain or specific domain controllers to which you want the Defender Security Server to connect to read data in Active Directory. Also ensure you have an account that meets the requirements to allow the Defender Security Server to connect to Active Directory. Complete instructions are available in the Quick Start Guide. Please refer to the Administration Guide, the Quick Start Guide, and the Release Notes for further information. We'll begin by launching autorun.exe from the installation media. From the dialog that then appears, we'll choose Install. We won't look for updates at this time. Next, I'll click Install to launch the setup wizard. Click Next to continue, accept the terms. At the Select Features window, I'll leave all features selected as I want to perform a complete installation. Then click Next to continue. The installer auto detects the domain I want to connect to. I'll leave current account selected as I'm logged in with the administrator for the domain and that'll work for the purpose of this installation. Click Next to continue. The next portion of the wizard prepares Active Directory for my Defender installation. This includes extending the schema, creating and configuring control access rights, and creating the default Defender OUs. The wizard then asks to specify a port for the Defender Management Portal, and I'll leave the default as 8080. At this step, I can define an admin group for the Management Portal other than Domain Admins, which is the default. That can be configured later on, so I'll click Next to continue. At this point, I can click Install to continue the installation. The last step of the wizard gives the default option to start the Defender Security Server configuration tool, which I'll leave selected as we do want to configure the security server once we're done the wizard. The first step in configuring the Defender Security Server is adding the IP address of the domain controller I want Defender to connect to. Alternately, I could enter the DNS name of the domain controller or the DNS name of the domain itself. I'll leave the default port as 389 and SSL port as 0. Both of those can be configured at a later time if necessary. For the Surface Account username, I'm going to enter the administrator for the domain. I know it has all the permissions I need for Defender to run. Be sure to refer to the documentation so you know what permissions are required for any Surface Account you may enter here. When I click Apply, the wizard asks me if I want to restart the service. I'll click Yes, that's fine. Next, I'll select the Audit Log tab. From here, I can define where I want log files to be written. For the sake of the demo, I'll leave the default location, which is in the Program Files directory. But I can change it by clicking Browse. Next, what I'd like to do is select the option Create Additional Log with Fixed Name. This allows me to define a text file where all the current logging will go in the Logs directory. That saves me from having to decipher which of my log files is the most current. And this comes in handy when troubleshooting any issues later on. I won't enable syslog at this time. That's something that can be configured later on as well. Next, I'll click the Test Connection tab, click Test. And from here, I can confirm that I'm authenticating to Active Directory successfully. If there were any issues, they would be reported here. And then I could go troubleshoot any port issues or authentication issues. Next, I'll click the Service tab, and from here, I can confirm the service is installed and running. I'll click Apply again, and that completes the configuration. To learn more about Defender, please visit support.oneidentity.com forward slash Defender. Thank you.